Frank, one of the great discoveries of the 20th century is that the universe is expanding. And now we know it's even accelerating in its mm -hmm. expansion. But if we take a step back, what does that imply? What can we learn from it? I think the most profound thing we learn from the fact that the universe is expanding is that it used to be much smaller. <laughs> uh, if you run the equations of physics backwards in time, which you can, uh, the present expansion, being, of course, is a contraction, and as the thing contracts, uh, gravitational attraction means that it's, it gathers steam, it gathers energy, mm -hmm. if you imagine running backwards. So the universe becomes much hotter as well as denser in, 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 the, in the early times. And that, for fundamental physics, is great news, because that's what we, where we think things become simple. When the energy is high, when things are close together, uh, new ra that's what we studied at accelerators, that's what we went to great, great uh, lengths to try to understand, and we did. There was a sort of gift from uh, God or the universe <laughs> that the laws of physics become simpler at extreme energies and at extreme distances. This is what's called asymptotic freedom, and that's what I got the Nobel Prize for. The, that's, that means the uh, early universe is in some sense, even though it's very extreme, would seem to be very far removed from everyday experience, is actually simpler to understand than, than the present universe. The present universe has all kinds of complexity, things have congealed and so on. But the, the early universe was sort of ideally simple and we know how to solve the equations pretty accurately. Uh, so that's, to me, the, the great lesson of the, of, uh, of the expanding universe is what you learn by running it backwards. And then uh, carrying that insight back forward to the present, to what, uh, what we learn is that a lot of what is true about the present universe comes about because of the way it started. Uh, things like the production of the different elements, the existence of the microwave background, and now we understand even the uh, formation of structures like galaxies and ultimately planets out of condensations of small fluctuations in the early universe, all these things come out of understanding that the universe was, what's much, was once much smaller, much denser, and subject to very simple laws. We can follow out their consequences and, by gosh, making very simple assumptions, we produce something that looks very much like the universe we see. I am equally fascinated by using the universe in reverse as a testbed Yes. For your theories of making the simple laws. And when you develop a a asymptotic freedom, how did, how did that work? And how did you think about uh, that? Because you, uh, you, you, you couldn't well, experiment. Well, we weren't, we weren't thinking about the early universe at all. Yeah. This is work I did with uh, David Gross. Uh, we weren't thinking about the early universe. That was a very pleasant surprise that sort of fell out of our work. We were thinking about... What are the fundamental forces that uh, hold atomic nuclei together? What is, and people had already realized that there were quarks that were f important in understanding what protons are made out of, but had only vague ideas about what the forces between them were. And we found exactly what those forces are, what the right equations are, predicted the existence of gluons. And uh, the key to all of it, the, the thing that led us to the particular equations that we, uh, we, we uh, hit on, that have turned out to be the right equations, was the observed fact that as quarks become close together or interact at very high energies, uh, they suddenly don't see each other very much at all. The interaction weakens. So the most powerful force in nature, the strong force that holds atomic nuclei together in really small packets and that prevents quarks from separating 
ever and being isolated, uh, that becomes very, very weak when the quarks become close together. And that property, which was observed in experiments, uh, is very, very difficult to accommodate within the quantum field theory, within the basic principles of uh, relativity and quantum mechanics. In fact, we had to work very hard to find any way of accommodating it at all. And then there was basically only one way, and so we had a unique set of equations that turned out to be the right equations, and then predicted a lot of other things, predicted the existence and properties of gluons, predicted, allowed us to think about the very early universe, becomes things become simple, allowed us to think about experiments at high energies in new ways, because we could talk about, instead of complicated protons and pions and things, we could follow the simplicity of the quarks and gluons, because things really get simple at high energy. So it was really a tremendous gift from heaven, <laughs> totally unanticipated, that ramified in directions that we could not have guessed at first.